For the last few weeks, we've been hearing about vineyards. In this case, both in uh, our reading from Isaiah, our responsorial psalm, uh, and especially our gospel, we hear how the vineyard, all right, planted by God, was the people, the house of Israel. We heard that again in our responsorial psalm, that the vineyard is to be, produce good fruits that would benefit all. Yet, as is presented, we see how Isaiah was foretelling the demise of the, first, of the vineyard that because they were not seeking to produce fruit for everyone, they were called to be the light of other nations, to proclaim you know, to all peoples uh, through their acts of, of kindness for the benefit of all, that they would enlighten the people around them. But as Isaiah was writing before the 700s and acknowledging that, yep, invaders are going to come in, take over the vineyard, and that would happen. Not just in the northern kingdom, that happened, but also to Judah. And Judah was the prized possession because not only did the Assyrians conquer the north, but the Babylonians conquered the entire land. And the people, the house of Israel, was sent asunder through all different places. They no longer could produce any good works now because, as it said, that, that vineyard was, um, well, basically torn asunder. There was no chance. And the people did not act according to God's will. In our gospel reading, we hear again how the vineyard, the house of Israel, uh, was built. And then, to secure that vineyard, the God sent his prophets to produce okay, the good fruits that were, you know, meant to be for everyone. And they went ahead and beat one set of them. The next set they killed. And they were willing to do that to whoever was sent, including God's son. Jesus was foretelling what would happen to him. He is there to enlighten them and tell them how to produce good fruits once again that he killed him, threw him out of the vineyard, and he poses the question, what do you think will happen? And they answer the question themselves. Well, <clears throat> God will come back and put an end to those lousy people who um, refused to do God's will and would, circ <clears throat> and would circumvent them with new tenants that being the church, which is called to produce true fruit. We, the church, the body of Christ, are meant to be able to produce fruit for the benefit of everyone, the common good. Yet, are we really producing the fruits of what God wants us to do? We are vast in numbers, yet we look at the world around us and we see, again, threats, violence, chaos. What are we doing about it to circumvent that and bring a sense of unity to the world? It's easy to sit back and say, well, it's not my fault. I, I, you know, I, I do my part. But we are called to produce the fruits. When the church was uh, <clears throat> born through the power of the Holy Spirit of Pentecost, there was given those gifts of the Holy Spirit, which all of us are received and have received at our confirmation, and yet we're supposed to use those gifts of the Holy Spirit to produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit. 
How many people here know all the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Can any of you name one of them? I'm sorry? No, no, that, that, that's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are charity. What is charity? They say charity begins at home, within the domestic church. Charity is giving to another without counting the cost or seeking repayment. It's like a husband seeing flowers and say, you know what, I can make my wife's day and just grab a few flowers and bring them home and bestow it to her, and she doesn't have to say, what do you want? Just say, no, I saw the flowers and I thought of you, honey. Trust me, it'll make her day. The same thing goes in regard to uh, acknowledging your husband. You're out shopping, you're thinking of doing something, you're having and hauling about what you would like to do, and then you say, you know what? There's something special I know that he likes that I can go ahead and provide for supper that he will really enjoy. It's simple things. It's not overbearing things that make a sense of true charity. And we can bring that sense of giving to each other, to our children, to our spouses, to our parents. I mean, there's nothing better if you're a kid if, <laughs> you know, than to uh, just simply go up to your parents and say, you know what, I don't say it enough, but I love you. After you have to resuscitate your, mo your mother because she <laughs> fell on the floor, uh, you could just say, no, I wanted to tell you that I meant that. We fail to realize how much we can do to benefit our homes, our families. We can try to do these simple things that express something special, to give your children a dessert, that they ordinarily wouldn't get just to let them know that they're special. Not for their birthday, not for a, a, a special day, but out of a sense of bringing about a sense of peace and harmony to the family. Another gift of the Holy Spirit is peace. Peace, I mean, fruit of the Holy Spirit is peace. Peace is not not war. Peace is the understanding of the dignity of each person and in light of that, wanting to create a harmonious appreciation of living in community. Peace is being able to forgive someone, to be able to look past another's faults, Instead of pushing the buttons that provoke, and we all know how to do that. Trust me, I know how, what buttons to push to get my sisters, you know, in, in an uproar. They're probably listening at home right now. But uh, instead of doing that, trying to do something that will bring people together. You know, even within this the COVID that we have, the understanding of trying to get people to, that you know you're with regularly that are not COVID positive, to at least be able to assemble and celebrate life. Because it is that which God is asking us to do. Another is faith. How many of us really practice our faith at home? I mean, we might come to church, but do we really practice our faith at home? Do we pray and acknowledge God's presence at meals? Do we think about supporting somebody within our family with prayers because they're going through a difficult time? Or praying for a parent who's seeking work because they lost their job due to a pandemic? There are things that we can always do that don't go beyond our capabilities, that bring about real results. 
Another is joy. Okay, joy is knowing that God is present among us. Joy is living without fear of the future, but acknowledging God's abiding presence who brings protection whenever we invite him into our lives. Whether we receive communion in person or whether we receive spiritual communion at home through the celebration of this liturgy, are we really asking to have God come into our lives to bring us a sense of joy, of understanding that he is the one who is in ultimate control. Because if we live our lives without this sense and appreciation of others, and we just try to do what we want to do, we, regardless if it's within the family, it becomes chaotic. What happened to Israel is they just started to do what they wanted to do instead of seeking the will of God. Now, I have a homework assignment for all of you again. The deacon can give out assignments as a teacher, so can I. So I want you to go ahead and Google and look up what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit and how can I implement them into my family life. For when we do that at home, we then get a greater sense of community for the world, for our neighborhoods, for our country. And we start doing things that you know, go against the chaos that's constantly provided. Instead of listening to the media who constantly points out the vision, instead of seeking ways in which we are, pre we are called to harmony and unity, especially through this Eucharist, we can sit back and complain and say, oh well, or we can actually do something knowing we have these gifts this abilities to make our lives better. God wants us not just to be happy in this lifetime, but to be eternally joyful for all time. He wants us to know the true sense of peace. Again, you know, it, 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 it's not, you know, living your life worried about what's going to happen in the future. A peace is just taking the time to acknowledge that God is with us. Seek the sacrament of penance if you have issues within your life. Trust me, it goes a lot further than you could possibly imagine. Instead of going to a psychologist and paying... And by the way, you have to wear the mask. You have to stand on the other side of the room, as I hear right now. And you're going to be paying $165 for a half hour? There's no cost going over there to that confessional. And allow God to bring you that sense of mercy, of being restored in his grace of being someone who now is far more capable of seeing and understanding the person next to you or the plights of struggles that they are going to. You're able to observe more people as to who you can help instead of thinking of oneself. Allow God to come into your homes. Allow him to be the one who inspires you to do good works and to produce good fruits that benefit one and all.